We live in an era in which stereotypes are regarded as bad, discriminatory, and potentially even oppressive. That wasn't always the case. For much of civilizational history, the phenomenon of stereotypes was regarded as perfectly normal and even natural. It was a way for people to differentiate between cultures, communities, or even sections of society through observation of the way in which people belonging to different groups tend to behave. It was, you could say, an attempt to simplify life through generalization. Now that you're all riled up and angry about the fact that I'm on the verge of endorsing negative stereotyping, let me ensure you that that is not the point of this video. The point of this video, however, is an attempt to understand why stereotypes exist in the first place and to present some ideas on how we can respond to them. In his famous Reflections on the Revolution in France, Edmund Burke describes prejudice as untaught feelings of what is right and wrong based on stereotypes that have developed over and passed through generations. When Burke describes stereotypes and prejudices, he makes the point that it is an obvious consequence of human nature. And as I have said on this show before, to describe something as part of human nature is not necessarily to endorse it, it's simply to state the existence thereof as something that would necessarily transpire as a result of human interaction. In his book, The End of Racism, Dinesh D'Souza makes the point that it is not particularly useful to dismiss stereotypes out of hand, as they sometimes contain an element of truth. One way to illustrate the point, he says, is to swap them around. There are negative stereotypes about every conceivable community, be it men, women, old people, young people, the English, the Germans, the Irish, the Americans, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Russians, the Jews, Africans, white people, and whoever you can think of. If, for example, we were to say that German people tend not to have a sense of humor, or that Americans are obsessed with guns, or that the Chinese are less concerned about human rights, or that men tend not to be as gentle as women, or that young people are prone to prioritize social life over work obligations, or that old people tend to struggle with change. We can reject all of these claims as discriminatory stereotypes which should not be entertained at all, or we can test them. One way to do this, D'Souza suggests, is to swap them around. If we say for the sake of the argument that no, it is the Chinese who are obsessed with guns and it is the Americans who don't care about human rights, we find the stereotype slightly more ludicrous. We might then conclude that perhaps, sometimes, the stereotype exists for a reason. If we are the target of some negative stereotypes, we can reject it out of hand, but we can also seriously consider whether it contains an element of truth. And if we are bothered by that stereotype, we can ask ourselves, what can we do to disprove it? The ironic part is that we tend to summarily reject negative stereotypes when we encounter them, while we tend to wholeheartedly participate in positive stereotyping. To say that Chinese people tend to be good at math is not nearly as objectionable as to say that they are not good at something else, for example. Or to say that the Irish are friendly is not nearly as objectionable as to say that they spend too much time in the pub. So what's the point? The point is that sometimes stereotypes exist for a reason. Sometimes, however, we find that stereotypes are simply false and indeed discriminatory or even oppressive. Sometimes, the best way to approach stereotypes is not simply to pretend that they don't exist or to dismiss a stereotype simply because it is a stereotype, but rather to take note of it, to consider whether it contains an element of truth, which obviously isn't always the case, and then to determine whether we regard it as necessary to break that stereotype. If that stereotype is something that deserves to be disproven, the best way to do so is through our own observable behavior. My name is Adam Strutz and this is your fact sheet.